All right, welcome to a midterm review video over least squares regression line. If you remember, the whole idea of a least squares regression line was this idea that we're going to take two quantitative variables, which means we got numbers on the x-axis, numbers on the right axis, and we have a scatter plot that's connecting these two variables, and our job is to fit a line through the data. So that's our least squares regression line basic idea. Now, the easiest way for us to talk about that line is for me to give you a scatter plot and give you what we've talked about as that computer output. The computer output is just a fancy way for me to give you the equation of this line. So here's the deal. We want to know does the amount of detergent affect the height of soap suds? So how much detergent do we put into a pan? Does that amount does that, you know, more detergent? Does that mean more soap suds? The higher the height of the soap suds. So a couple things. If I ask you to describe this scatter plot, we do see a positive trend. So you got to make sure you talk about the direction, positive. Um, it does look linear, so its form is linear. It means that it is making a straight line, or at least somewhat of a straight line. Uh, what else do we need to understand here? We need to understand that there is some strength involved, right? Well, the strength here would be pretty darn strong, right? I mean, those those dots are really forming a nice straight line, so that would be very strong. And another way we can understand strength is through r squared and r. So if r squared, remember we never use this r squared adjusted. If r squared is 0 0.969, if I take the square root of 0 0.969, don't take the square root of the percent, take the square root of the decimal, please, you get r. So we get the correlation between these two variables is 0 0.9843, which is very, very strong. Remember, you can never be bigger than one. So this is, again, one's as strong as you can get. This is pretty strong. And then also make sure you understand the general idea of what's happening here. The more detergent I put in the water, the higher the soap suds. That nice kind of general statement. All right, now what are some questions that I could ask you dealing with one of these computer outputs? Well, first, what's the equation of the line? Remember, the equation of the line is y hat equals a plus bx, where y hat is the predicted height of the soap suds, because that's what we're trying to do. The dots are actual. I'm trying to predict to the height. Now, the dots are, again, the dots are actual. My line is a prediction. Based on x, the amount of detergent given. So a is the y-intercept, which is always right next to the word constant. So I have y hat equals negative 2.679. So again, the y-intercept, a, is always right next to the the word constant, and directly underneath A is B, the slope. So it'd be plus 9.5x. So 9.5 is my slope. So very, very nice and simple. Now make sure you define your variables. The variables are x and y. So make sure you just take a moment to tell me x is detergent. And then don't forget units, that is detergent in grams. And y hat, and this is important that you write that this is a predicted, this is not actual. This equation is just meant to predict. This is the predicted height of the soap suds in millimeters. So that's what we mean by define the variables. The A and the B are no longer variables because we have identified those two numbers. Now, usually I'm going to also ask you to interpret the slope. In fact, this is typically always going to happen. The slope is 9.5, and I like to make it a fraction by putting it over 1. Now, if we think about slope back in algebra, the 1, the denominator, is always the x, and the top number is always the y. That means the 1x is the detergent. I'm going to put DET for detergent there, in grams. And the Y on top is the height. Y is the height in millimeters. So how can I interpret the slope? Well, it tells me for every one gram of detergent. Remember, this is that script i got to follow. The predicted, the predicted height increases, because it is positive, increases by 9.5 millimeters. So make sure you remember that script. For every one gram of detergent, the predicted height increases by 9.5 millimeters. Now, a couple other things. When we look at this chart, these P's we never use, these T's we never use, and these SE's we never use. So don't ever use those by mistake, please. Okay, I'm going to scroll down to give myself some room here. What about the Y-intercept? The Y-intercept was the A value. 
negative 2.679. A y-intercept tells me what happens when x is 0. So x would be 0 grams of detergent. I'm expected to get negative 2.679 millimeters of height. So when 0 grams of detergent, detergent are used, I predict, and again, anytime you use this equation, you've got to have that word predicted there. I predict uh, negative 2.679 millimeters of height. Now, once again, you can't have negatives. Sometimes the y-intercept doesn't make sense. Don't worry about it too much. If you're asked to interpret it, still do it. But sometimes it doesn't seem to make sense because you can't really have negative height. And that's okay. All right, what does S mean? Well, S, again, it's in the chart. It's right there. It's the 1.99821. So I'm going to write that down first. 1.99821. S is the standard deviation of the residuals. Standard deviation of residuals. All right, let's recap what this was. Now, remember, a residual is how far the line is from the actual dot. So I have seven dots here. So there's a residual here. How far? All of these are residuals. So some residuals are positive, some residuals are negative. So once again, notice that um, for the most part, my line is pretty good at making predictions, by the way. That's because my r squared is so high, which we'll get to in a second, but s is the standard deviation of residuals. It tells you when you use this line to make predictions, how far are you typically off? So what I'm trying to say here by this s value is that when I use this equation to make a prediction for the height of a soap sud, I'm typically off by 1.99 millimeters. That's pretty good. Look at the scatter plot, right? I mean, almost every dot is very, very close to the line. So this means that when I use my equation to make predictions, I'm typically off by 1.99 millimeters, which means I'm not off by very much. I'm very, very accurate. Okay, what does R squared mean? Well, again, R was 96.9%. Now, R squared tells you the actual percentage of connection between these two variables. So I know that 96.9% of the variation in height, you always start with the Y, 96.9% of the variation in height is explained by the variation in detergent. Now, what I'm trying to say by this is the idea is that, you know, if you look at the scatter plot, there's different detergents and there's different heights. So I'm trying to show that there is a connection. I do see that the more detergent, the more the height. So what I'm trying to admit here is that 96.9% of those different heights, of those varying heights, are actually due to the varying detergent. So apparently detergent has a lot to do with the height of those subsides. So that's how that helps me. So again, that's another one of those scripts you've got to follow. Okay, one more thing I could ask you to do is to predict the height if 5.4 grams of detergent are used. So once again, I'm just going to use my equation here, which is y hat equals negative 2.679 plus 9.5. And then instead of x, I'm going to plug in the grams. That's the 9.4, or the 5.4. So let's see here. I'm going to use my calculator. Negative 2.679 plus 9.5 times 5.4 gives me 48.621 millimeters of soap suds. 48.621 millimeters of soap sud. Okay, now, once you have a prediction, you could think about the residual, right? So let's look at my chart real quick. 5.4, 5.4 was right around here, right? 5.4 somewhere right around here, right? So this is what I predicted. I predicted about 48.621 millimeters of height, okay? Now, let's just say that the actual value was 50. Like there was actually 50 millimeters when I actually put 5.4 in there. So that's a residual, right? A residual is the actual height. Let's, I'm just telling you, it's 50, right? I actually saw it, I did, it was 50. And then you subtract away the predicted, 48.621, and 50 minus that value is 
I'm sorry, 1.379. And again, that is the residual measured in millimeters. So that means that I had a positive residual. So my actual value was a little bit higher than predicted when it came to 5.4 grams. So 50 was the actual that I knew from an actual experiment, whereas the 48.621 was a predicted value. And look, I was only off by 1.379, which makes sense because I'm typically off by 1.99821, right? That's the standard deviation of residuals, how much you're typically off by. So the fact that I'm off by less than that shows me that I am making pretty good predictions. So that's a very quick run through about the major basic ideas of what you could do with one of these computer outputs for a least squares regression line. Hopefully that made sense and all of that is kind of, um, you know, ringing back to things that we did in the past.